back, relax, and maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hi guys, I'm here today to do part three of my Christmas book haul. I was very lucky over December and I've managed to acquire so many new books that this video is getting longer by the second and I seem to be chatting too much. So welcome to part three. If you've not already seen part one and part two, I will link them down below and up above and you can go and give them a look. There are so many books in these book hauls that I am so excited to read. I need your help choosing so definitely do watch all of the parts. It doesn't really matter on the order but so far I've shown you guys the books that I got from publishers and also the books that I was gifted from friends like Eleanor and Mercedes and my family so do go and check out both of those parts. With that said let's get started on all of the books I bought for myself with money I was gifted for Christmas or just because I wanted to treat myself. So there's quite a few, um, a lot of them are books I've wanted for a long time and I decided that I was going to start buying books that I'd heard people talk about more because I want to kind of take a lot of people up on the recommendations they give. I often hear my friends talk again and again and again about certain books and I want them but I just never get around to buying them. So I kind of decided I was just going to treat myself and get a lot of the books I'd heard recommended from people I really really trust in this book haul. So that's what I've done. The first few books are all books that I heard about originally on Mercedes channel whose channel is Mercy's Bookish Musing. I'll link her down below and she's a really good friend of mine. I really trust her opinion when it comes to books because a lot of the ones she's recommended to me or bought for me I have adored. So I decided I'm going to pick up a few more of the books I hear her talk about very very frequently. So I picked up three books I've heard about from her. The first one is probably no surprise if you've watched her channel recently. It's called The New and Improved Romy Futch and it's by Julia Elliott. She raves about this book. She always says it's just one of those books that is really surprising that she liked it. She thought it would be a good one but she didn't understand just how much she would love it. It's set in the south of America and it's about a person called Romy Futch. Down on his luck and pining for his ex-wife, the 40-something taxidermist spends his evenings drunkenly surfing the internet and passing out on his couch. In a last ditch attempt to pay his mortgage, he becomes a research subject at the Centre for Cybernetic Neuroscience, where scientists download humanity's disciplines into his brain. I mean, that already sounds pretty damn cool. Suddenly, Romy and his fellow guinea pigs are speaking in Hiflotan sat words. I don't know what that means, I'm gonna have to Google that later. And hashing out the intricacies of postmodern subjectivity. With his new and improved brain, Romy hopes to reclaim his marriage revolutionise his life and revive his artistic aspirations. While tracking down specimens for elaborate animatronic taxidermy dioramas, he learns of Hogzilla, a thousand pound feral hog with supernatural traits that has been terrorising the locals. As his obsession with bagging the beast brings him closer and closer to this lab-spawned monster, Romy gets pulled into an absurd and murky underworld of biotech operatives, FDA agents and environmental activists. I mean, it sounds batshit crazy to be honest with you, <laughs> it really does, but it also sounds really really fun and really cool and I definitely think it sounds like a book I would like, so I'm really excited to give this a try. Hopefully I'll love it as much as you Mercedes, I'm definitely excited to try it out, yeah. Can't wait. I also love the cover. I wasn't sure about it at first and it's just grown on me and now I really like it because I like the way that the pig has these crazy spikes coming out of it and fire coming out of its mouth. It's pretty cool. The next one I picked up on Mercedes recommendation is completely not that. I think this is a lot more serious. This one is We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Shriver. I'm pretty sure that Mercedes said this was one of the first ever adult books that she read and one of the first books that really touched her in a really emotional way and made her want to read more. So that sounds pretty great to me. Um, it says Eva never really wanted to be a mother and certainly not of a boy who murdered seven of his fellow high school students, a cafeteria worker and a teacher who tried to befriend him. Now, two years later, it's time for her to come to terms with, with Kevin's horrific rampage in a series of startlingly direct correspondences with her estranged husband. Uneasy with the sacrifices of motherhood, Eva fears that her dislike for her own son may be responsible for driving him so drastically off of the rails. It honestly sounds like it's going to be really hard-hitting, really emotional. 
definitely a sad book it's very relevant because obviously we do still have a lot of school shootings and child shootings in America and places where there are a lot more guns um, it's horrible every time you hear about one it is devastating and I think this is going to be a really hard book to read but I also think it's going to be absolutely emotionally what I love and I do love really hard-hitting horrible stories this is fictional so it's not a non-fiction but it's obviously based a lot on stuff that has happened and I think it's going to be devastating so I'll have to go into this when I know that I have a pack of tissues nearby and I can cry but I'm really excited to try it out too and I think it's going to be fantastic and it will be my first Lionel Shriver and I know that Mercedes really likes Lionel Shriver so hopefully I will too. And the final one I picked up because of you, Mercedes, is this one. The Inconvenient Indian, a curious account of the native people in North America by Thomas King. This sounds fantastic. I don't know anything much about Native Americans and that is really to my shame. I would love to know more. As far as I know, this is written by a Canadian author and it is a historical account of Native American people. It does sound like it is going to be really, really interesting from what I've heard Mercedes say of it and it does seem like a sort of book that will really educate me in some great ways about these people that I really don't know anything about. I want to because it does sound like a fascinating and beautiful culture and it's something I would love to learn more about so I'm really looking forward to this. I know that she has raved about it and raved about it and I finally managed to find a copy so I could not wait to pick this one up and hopefully I will love it just as much as you did. Also it says that this author has a couple of different short story collections and other novels out so if I like this I'll definitely pick up the others too. And it's a beautiful beautiful cover. The next two books that I have are books that I heard about on I believe Jen Campbell's channel. The first one definitely and the second one I'm pretty sure she's at least mentioned this author a few times if not this book. The first one is Beyond the Pale which is by Emily Urquhart. I have heard nothing but fantastic things about this book, especially from Jen. Jen always talks about this. She says it is amazing and I think it's going to be. It says it's about folklore, family and the mystery of our hidden genes. I believe it is a non-fiction about a mother who gives birth to a baby girl called Sadie Jane who has a shock of snow white hair. Within three months, Sadie is diagnosed with albinism, a rare genetic disorder. Using her knowledge of folklore, Emily seeks to uncover the truth and beliefs surrounding this life-changing diagnosis and delves into both the experiences and community that will shape her daughter's adult life. Part genetic travelogue and part parenting memoir, Emily's exploration takes us to a faraway continent through her own family tree and unearths cultural landscapes of poignant beauty, wonder and occasional horror. I believe that this is a real in-depth exploration of albinism, which is something I don't know an awful lot about. All I know about albinism is what it says on the blurb and what I've heard from Jen's videos and I know that Emily is apparently fantastic as a person and has done a lot of research into this because obviously it's affected her own life and her daughter's life. I love non-fiction books and this does sound exactly up my street so although it took me a while to get around to picking this up because again it's a book that seems hard to get hold of much like The Inconvenient Indian for a reasonable price I did eventually find it and I now have it and I'm very very excited to read it so can't wait for that. And this one I'm pretty sure I also heard about on Jin's channel but maybe it was someone else. Um, definitely it's a short story collection called Magic for Beginners by Kelly Link. It says Magic for Beginners is many things, strangely sweet, liberally scattered with brilliance, a magical lens on the stuff of life that moves and makes us. These are stories of the real world made beautifully unreal, of transformation, love, zombies and brothers fired from cannons. They are the stories you have been waiting to read. If you have been following my channel for the last year, you probably know that in the early months of 2016 I read a lot of short story collections and loved them and even in the very end months of 2016 I did that too and I've really been wanting to get back into them because I just, I think it's fascinating when you can read a really short story that has a profound effect on you and sometimes that's what they do and I hope that Kelly Link might be one of those authors. I've heard great things about her but I've never read anything by her so I'm planning to try and start with this collection which I think is her most well-known one so fingers crossed I like it. I think she's got quite a few other collections if I do and I'll definitely be intrigued to hopefully report back to you guys fairly soon. The next one I picked up on a recommendation from I believe 
um, Rachel from Kalanadi, but also I think Brie from Stories from the Shelf because I think they read it together. This is Sherry S. Tepper's The Gate to Woman's Country. It's another one of the SF masterworks from Galantz, which I am trying to collect more of. And this is a story that I heard about from Rachel. Um, she mentioned that it had some really, really interesting stuff going on. I'll try and find her review and link it for you below because it sounded absolutely fascinating. It says, women rule in woman's country. Males are segregated at an early age and live in garrisons, plotting futilely for battles that must never be fought again. Inside the women's towns, protected from marauding males, education, arts and science flourish. But for some, there is more to see. Stavia's sojourn with the man she's forbidden to love brings into sharp focus the contradictions that define their lives. Soon, Stavia will face a decision, one that will change her world forever. It sounds really, really fantastic, and I've heard great things about Sherry S. Tepper. This originally came out in 1988, so again, it would fall into my reading books that were published before 2000 category, and I'm really, really excited to do so. I've heard so many good things. So as I say, if you want to know more about this one, check out Rachel's review, but a world which is kind of gender flipped always fascinates me, where women are the one in control and men are the one who are not. Kind of alternate universe, isn't it? And it just, it sounds really cool. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely intrigued and I hope that I like it. The next one I picked up on a recommendation as well. This is Black Wolves by Kate Elliott. I actually picked this one up on a recommendation from Anna and Renee, who are the hosts of the Fangirl Happy Hour podcast, which I'll put a link to their website below. Um, I have been loving the Fangirl Happy Hour podcast over the past few months, um, I think maybe four or five months now, I've been listening to it and I've nearly caught up, I'm getting closer. I adore them, they are some of the happiest, most fun, most interesting and most well articulated ladies I've ever heard and I just adore them. So I wanted to pick up one of the books that they've recommended. Now I have been trying to read one of Kate Elliott's other books and finding it quite slow, which is fine because I don't mind slow books, but I've heard from them since starting that one that this one is a great, great place to start with Kate Elliott. Even though it does follow on from some of her other books, it's still a really great entry point. And I've heard that there are a lot of really fantastic lady characters in this and male characters. So I'm, I'm excited by that. As you can see, the cover is pretty badass. And it says, 22 years have passed since Kellos, once captain of the legendary Black Wolves, lost his king and with them his honour. With the king murdered and the Black Wolves disbanded, Kellos lives in exile, far from the palace he once guarded with his life, until Marshal Denaris, sister to the dead king, comes to him with a plea, rejoin the palace guard and save her nephew, King Jehosh, before he meets his father's fate. A majestic tale of rival empires, determined warriors, Black Wolves is an unmissable treat for epic fantasy lovers everywhere. I think that I fall into the epic fantasy lovers category. So. It's a chunky one, but it's gonna be good. I can feel it and I'm super excited to give it a go. Sometime soon, I want to finish the one that I'm reading by her first, but I do plan to probably pick this one up fairly soon after that because I want to dive into this world headlong, so very excited for this. And now onto a couple of books I picked up just because I want them. So the first two I've actually already read, they are graphic novels, so as soon as they came in I read them. The first one is Descender, which is volume three. This is by Jeff Lemire and Dustin Le Guen. I loved this volume, it was absolutely beautiful. The artwork is just as stunning as ever, it's always beautiful, but the story in this one really goes into some detail on the backstories of the characters. It does feel a little bit formulaic because it goes from one character to the next and we get a back story for each of them but I think that was really really necessary for this volume to kind of give a bit more depth and detail on how our characters got to the point they're at in the end of volume two and why the world has basically or the universe has basically gone to all hell which it has it's so so good I really love this series it's just mind-blowing and awesome and cute and kind of crazy all at once the artwork always blows my mind in how beautiful it is and I just love the way that they are directing this so far. It feels very succinct to me. It doesn't feel like it's losing its way. It feels like it's covering a lot of different things. And I, I really like that. So I'm looking forward to carrying on with the volume four whenever that comes out. But I would definitely recommend volumes one to three. Loved it. Speaking of things that I loved, Lumberjanes volume five came out. I don't even know how I missed this, but I did. And then I saw it on Amazon recommended and I thought, my goodness, I need this. So I picked it up. This one is called Band Together. 
This one does have a range of art styles. I'm not as big a fan of this art style that it went into. I much prefer the first art style, which is by Brooke Allen, whereas the second art style is by Carolyn Nowak. I don't mind the second art style, it's alright, um, and like you can still see who the characters are, I just prefer Brooke Allen's style. However, the story was just as cute and lovely and wonderful as always. It really did show a bit of backstory on the girls and how they became friends, and it also showed some really great moments between them, kind of testing that friendship. I adore this volume, this series, it's just beautiful, it's all about friends, it's all about love and care and it's about just these girls having fun together, being great and awesome and not needing other people to get involved in their friendship. Would highly, highly, highly recommend Lumberjanes. And then I just have four more books so I'll try and go through them quickly. The first one I picked up is one I've not actually heard anyone talk about. It's called True Things About Me. It's by Deborah K. Davies. I picked this up because I've already read one book by Deborah K. Davies which is called Reasons I Go to the Woods. It's a very dark twisted story and I believe this is kind of in the same vein as that. I loved Reason She Goes to the Woods so I'm super excited to pick up this one and try this one. It says, from their first encounter late one night in an underground car park, the narrator of True Things About Me is intoxicated by a stranger who seems to overwhelm her quiet life. But beneath the surface, something takes hold that will drive her to extremes of pleasure and finally, on a cold and eerie night, to face up to her fate. It sounds pretty creepy and interesting. Um, I think Deborah K. Davies deals with really horrible topics really well. She kind of draws you into this very creepy nasty narrative and tells you about these horrible horrific things so don't read this if you don't like that but she does it in a really beautiful way. Her writing is absolutely staggering from what I remember in the other book so I hope that is true of this one too and I would like to read more by her. I read through her books super fast but it was so easy and creepy and ominous all at once. It was just not like a lot of other books I've read so I hope the same is true of this one and I'm definitely looking forward to picking this up and giving it a go when I'm in the mood for that sort of thing. The next one I picked up because I've already read quite a few books by this author and I want to keep reading more. This is The Killing Moon book one of the Dreamblood series by N.K. Jemisin. I loved, loved, loved the fifth season and The Obelisk Gate so I wanted to try this. I have read The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin and not been that impressed by that one. So hopefully I'll love this one and it will fall into the yay it's awesome category and not the ooh I don't like that category which is what 100,000 Kingdoms was in. But this one sounds more up my street. It says in the ancient city of Gujarat, I am not going to say that correctly, peace is the only law. Upon its rooftops and among the shadows of its cobbled streets wait the gatherers, the keepers of this peace. Priests of the dream goddess, their duty is to harvest the magic of the sleeping mind and use it to heal, soothe and kill those judged corrupt. Which sounds pretty cool already. But when a conspiracy blooms within Great Temple, the gatherer Ihiru must question everything he knows. Someone or something is murdering innocent dreamers in the goddess's name, and Ihiru must now protect the woman he was sent to kill, or watch the city be devoured by war and forbidden magic. It sounds like it's going to be epic and lovely and kind of creepy all at once. That idea of this dream magic sounds really, really creepy but awesome. I'm hopeful that I'll like it and it does seem like this is more in the same vein as the fifth season and the Hundred Thousand Kingdoms, so fingers crossed I like it. Speaking of authors that I want to read more by, I also picked up The Dispossessed by Ursula Le Guin. This is also set in the Hainish cycle and this is actually a book that I'm going to be reading in January so if you would like to join me on this one I'm going to be hosting a read along which is going to be part of my Goodreads group. I'll put it down below, link it, go and go and check it out. Um, if you want to read this with me go and join the group. I'm going to be having discussion threads and talking about it there a lot in spoilery details so if you want that definitely join. I'll also be using a hashtag on Twitter so that if you want to tweet at me whilst you read this you can do that as well. I'd love to hear all of your thoughts so please do join in with that if you want to. This says the principle of simultaneity will revolutionise interstellar civilization by making possible instantaneous communication. It is the life work of Chevek, a brilliant physicist from the arid anarchist world of Anarais. Chevek's world is being stifled by jealous colleagues so he travels to Anarais' sister planet Urus hoping to find more tolerance there, but he soon finds himself being used as a pawn in a deadly political game. 
It sounds very, very ominous and cool. I do believe it's part of the Hainish cycle, but you don't have to have read all the other books before you can read this because most of them are standalones. And this was originally published in 1974, so it definitely falls into the category of reading books that came out before 2000. It sounds pretty cool. It's one of the SF masterworks which I'm trying to collect and I'm definitely, definitely excited to try it out. And the final book that I got for myself is again one by an author I've already read and really enjoyed. That author is Louise O'Neill and this is called Asking For It, What Did She Expect? This I believe deals with rape culture which is quite a hard-hitting one. Um, I think it's going to be a really, really great read because I read um, only Ever Yours, which is by Louise O'Neill too, and I loved it. It was such a page turner, but also very beautiful. It dealt with a relationship between two females in a world where it just was not permitted, and it was really moving and kind of hard hitting and emotional, but it was also super fun, and I love that blend that she has, so I'm, I'm definitely intrigued to see what she does with this. It's the beginning of summer, and Emma O'Donovan is 18 years old, beautiful, happy, and confident. One night there's a party, everyone is there and all eyes are on Emma. The next day she wakes up on the front porch of her house and she doesn't know how she got there. She doesn't know why she's in pain, but everyone else does. Photographs taken at the party show in great detail exactly what happened to Emma that night. But sometimes people don't want to believe what's right in front of them, especially if the truth concerns the town's heroes. A brave, bold and important novel about sexual consent and betrayal victim blaming and truth in the age of the smartphone. It sounds really emotional, really hard hitting, like I say, very important as well. From what I've heard from friends who've read it, they all seem to love it, so hopefully I will as well. Definitely, definitely excited to get to this fairly soon and I'm sure it will be wonderful, so looking forward to that. So we've reached the end, the crazy end of my Christmassy december -y book haul, which has gone on quite a long time, three videos. Don't forget if you've not already watched part one and two to go and do that. Do let me know down below if you've read any of the books that I just mentioned or if you want to and tell me in the comments what you got for Christmas that you're excited to read or if you are planning to join in with my buddy read of The Dispossessed in January. Please also let me know that. I'd love for you to join even if it goes into February or whatever that's fine. Just use the hashtag or join the Goodreads group or do both and let me know your thoughts. So thank you all so much for joining in with me, for watching this and for leaving me your comments. I will see you very soon in another video. Bye! Thank you for watching my video today. Go pick up a book, then come back and chat with me again.